Hello, I'm Frank Skinner. Over the last 20 years, I've performed stand-up comedy to every type of audience at all sorts of places. Or so I thought. In just five days, I've got to write a stand-up gig for a commune full of soul searchers who are more used to cosmic healing, weird meditations, and on a good day, tantric sex. This is my tough gig. Hello, Osho Leela! I'm on my way to Osho Leela in Dorset, a commune of 20 full-time residents who run workshops in spiritual enlightenment, anger therapy, and, if the rumours are true, free love. So I find it pretty amazing that people actually go and live away from the world and uh, meditate every day and do what they do. It might be that they've discovered the secret of life, you know, it might be that I go there and don't come back. I have to praise you like a shoe. It's well known that these places encourage you to soul search. I'm not sure whether it's this or the controversial methods they might use that worries me. Never get an analyst because there's something wrong with comedians. That's what makes them funny. And if you get that cured, you might lose a lot of intense internal pain, but you won't be funny anymore. So if I was to go through some spiritual awakening here that changed my brain, then the jokes might stop. Hiya. Hi Frank, how are you doing? Hi Frank. Good to, uh, Miran, uh, Miran, Miran, good to meet you. I'm community manager, and uh, we're all dead excited that you've chosen to visit our community. Well, I'm, I'm dead excited. Yeah. I'm slightly frightened. Oh, it's Hello. Hi. Oh, this is great. It's like the Waltons. Brilliant. Hello. God, there's loads of you. Hello. Shall I start handshaking or we're going to hug? We start hugging this early. We just say. I'm going to hug you first. Is it alphabetical order? <laughs> the residents have dumped their old names and adopted new Indian ones. And now, it's hoggy time. Hello. Hello. Don't, don't try and get out of there. Hello. You last the hog. I, I feel like I've just scored a really good goal. I'll try and keep almost like a comedy journal, so as each incident happens, then I'll try and draw stuff out of that. Can I start by saying thank you for letting me come here? I'm, I'm coming with a completely open mind. I don't really know much about what happens here or who you are. We're just uh, people who are into the same kind of way of life, which is really yeah. celebration, a bit of looking at ourselves and this kind of thing, and yeah. self-development, you know? The whole place is way out of my comfort zone and the sleeping arrangements over the next five days aren't going to help. So this is where we'll be staying, dormitory. Hiya. Hey. There's girls in my dormitory. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is it normal for the dorms to be mixed with boys and girls? Because I was slightly horrified when I went in the toilets and I realised that the men's and the women's cubicles are right next to each other. Yeah. Because I just thought, I don't want to be in here and be heard and then walk out and there's a woman looking at me saying, I know what you've just done. I feel <laughs> terrible. I'm sharing a room with Jaya and Nartan, so I've got to start losing my inhibitions. Amira takes me to the room where I'll be doing just that. So this is our group room, which we call Zorba, and it's where, we're, where the action goes on. Meditations, uh, training groups, dancing. When do you dance? Uh, well, morning meetings we do a bit of clubby, high energy music, that kind of thing. First thing in the morning? Oh yeah, well about 9 o'clock, it's not so early, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be dancing to house music at 9 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. Okay. I usually have a bit of a radio for me. Right. <laughs> I was very apprehensive about Frank coming. I thought when I first heard he was coming, I was just terrified, really. That's, and I, I, I welcomed it, but yeah, it wasn't uh, immediately, yes, this is a good idea. It's quite risky for Frank coming here because, you know, it's quite controversial in a way, what, what happens here, and, and it could ruin his reputation. And so I joined my first meditation session. 
I have to say, it isn't exactly what I imagined. It seems a bit active. The idea is that you don't think about anything at all, really. But um, obviously I was thinking, I wonder if there's a joke in this bit. <laughs> Which is probably going to be a slight problem with the meditation thing, because I'll be thinking gag-wise. Oh, it's that really young clubber. I can only apologise for this. So far, so good. But outside of the dancing, I've got more pressing concerns. Because there's going to be a gig at the end of this week, you know, normally you don't hang around with your audience all the time. <laughs> you make, so when you're with friends, you can say, so if there's anything funny, you think, oh, I'll actually put that in my stand up act. And then when you go to the audience, they're new. But that doesn't work here. Every resident at the commune works six, seven-hour days towards its upkeep, and I'm no exception. So, at the start of day two, I'm stuffing envelopes. I'll tell you what I am liking. I'm liking the I-don't-give-a-shit policy of most of the people that live there. For example, if you're going to do some dancing, I don't feel anybody is thinking... Actually, I, I hope my dancing's all right today. I think one of the best achievements you can get in your life is to be able to dance as if you're invisible. Actually, I think you were dancing like nobody was watching. I think I was. Yeah. I think it was the comfort of so many other bad dancers around me. <laughs> <laughs> Like I was doing a, a male shot and I got a bit of repetitive stress syndrome in the shoulders because I don't often do manual work. And uh, instead of thinking, oh, maybe I need to do you know, a few stretches or um, I'll phone my Harley Street physician, I thought to myself, oh, what I need to do is to put some house music on and do a bit of dancing. Now I would not have thought that two days ago. <laughs> Man, I'm freeing up. I don't care anymore. As I get to know people here, they come and sit by me or take me to one side. And there's quite a lot of apprehension amongst the people here about the fact that there's A, a film crew, and be a comedian. One, two, three. No! The rest of the day is spent getting in touch with my emotions using a technique called own meditation. When the music starts, I want you to find your first partner and shout, I'm angry. I wonder if the group are using this opportunity to vent their feelings about me. I feel that a lot of them have had, you know, trouble in their past and, you know, and, and maybe have been kind of slightly brought here by uh, pain and disappointment and anguish and stuff. They, this place is healing anyone who's is like that. There was some sensual dancing, which I had been worried about, but which was actually all right. And there was one bit where I was in the middle of a, a sort of a middle-aged woman sandwich. I didn't even know who was behind, because I started dancing with a woman and we got quite a close. And then I was aware that I, I'd been clamped. And we danced as a, as a, a kind of marvellous threesome. I didn't ever become um, fully erect or anything like that, but I, I think there was a... I think it moved from um, south to um, northeast. And the next stage is going to be the crying stage. <laughs> My mum bought me two, uh, bought me a Laurel and Hardy thing to hang on the wall, two heads, because I was a big Laurel and Hardy fan, still am. And um, it was £1.50. And years after she died, I found a little uh, card from the shop. And she'd bought it um, 25 pence a week over six weeks. And my, you know, my parents never had a hate me to that and, and all that. 
And I just thought about that and the fact that if I'd got famous a bit quicker, I could have bought them a posh house, but they died before. So whenever I think about it, I, crying is quite easy. That, that's my set. I'm sorry about using my parents' as raw material for it, but um, yeah, so the crying bit was all right. I'm halfway through my stay here, and even though I'm getting on really well with the residents, I still feel they think I've got other motives. I think they're pretty convinced that I'm going to come in and completely um, rip the piss out of them. That's not why I'm here, but are they ever going to believe me? I have to join in, I think, otherwise they'll, uh, they won't like me. And one of the things that comics really need is to be loved. I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll leave, and, you know, I'll shut the door in a mirror and say, thank God he's gone. Or do you anyone? <laughs>so where were we? That's the Osho Leela commune, that's me discovering my inner self, and that's the unlikely audience which I'll have to perform to in just two days time. But first, I need to deal with the tension about me being here at all. First of all, can I start by saying that I, I know that is a, a certain insecurity about the cameras and about me being in the house, and people have expressed that today. For me to sit here and people talking about, you know, these people, they might come in and they might, you know, make us look stupid and blah, blah, blah. Obviously, it's kind of, it, it puts me in a weird position to hear that because um, I guess in that scenario, I, I'm the bad guy. Um, and I completely understand it. I, I think I do, I, I want to point out that I'm kind of laying myself on the line here. First of all, professionally. Now, a lot of comics I know, and I thought about doing this myself, would think, well, I can use some of my old material, stuff I know works and reliable stuff. And I thought, oh no, not me. I'm not going to write anything. I'm going to turn up and write it all there, and it's all going to be absolutely tied to the experience. And, um, and of course, since I've been here, and you know, I, you, think, you think this is actually quite difficult, and um, what if it's not funny? People at home will think, oh yeah, he's actually rubbish, he can't write jokes, and when he came to do that gig, he went really badly. And that's kind of a, quite humiliating, and you know, could ruin my own career, and I might have to start drinking again. <laughs> I'm actually having a really good time. And uh, I'm not saying this to make you feel better, I'm just telling you what is in, uh, if you like, in my heart. And you are perfectly at liberty to continue being worried and suspicious. This is like the opening of a prison movie. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> We're building a uh, a memorial to a member of the community who died a year ago, and uh, I never met him, but uh, apparently he liked my show, so I feel really kind of like it's apt, you know. I think this place has definitely had an, had an effect on me. What I usually do is I find about three or four people I really like, and then I entertain them by slagging off the other people. And I'm not doing that here. I'm really trying to be nice to everybody and nice about everybody. I suspect there might be something really special happening here. I'm getting that as a very strong feeling. And he is a bit of a result. The residents have organised an afternoon workshop of tantric sex for themselves and some paying guests. Tantric sex is only part of a whole tantric concept. I have no idea what it is. I feel like I'm going to be having some sort of sexual experience with mystic men, and that is unnerving. Because I don't know if I've got the right numbers. I'm certainly hoping 69 doesn't come up this week. Being the in-house novice, visiting tantric sex guru Sarita gives me some one-on-one -on -one action to improve my technique. If I can ask a practical, would I be inside you, you at this be. point? Yeah, okay. yeah, definitely. Okay. Just wanted to clear that up. <laughs> and now I've been broken in. We embark on the full-on ritual. I, I went in with um, Nata, who is, is my uh, dorm mate, and uh, I went with her, and she's very sweet, and uh, we we're going to give it our best shot, you know. But there was one woman, one um, red-headed woman, who was in the uh, class who absolutely went for it. I mean... I couldn't believe it. I mean, she's going, oh, 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 oh. I mean, really, really going for it. And um, I'm very good at not laughing when I'm supposed to not laugh. You know, if you're rehearsing something, I, I can keep a straight face. But man, I totally lost it. I mean, I totally, it was, oh, it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> It was the funniest thing, I mean, it was... <laughs> I mean, there was some, you know, a lot of, a lot of middle-aged people sitting on the mats. And there was someone... <laughs> I mean, everyone, when they're having an orgasm, who put puts their arms up in the air? Unless they're at gunpoint. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Are you supposed to go in there to join with your partner and bond and be close to them through the tantric sex thing? But being with someone and pissing yourself laughing when you know you're not supposed to is an incredibly bonding experience. <laughs> So it's my last day at Osho Leela, and the audience are gathering for the gig. He's definitely out of his comfort zone at the moment. He was looking a bit nervous earlier, so I think he's a bit nervous about doing it. New material is always touch and go. You don't know what's funny and what isn't. Uh, you never know if you're going to remember it, which is the single biggest problem. And uh, just to make it more interesting, I'd usually do this in a little club somewhere, so there's not too many witnesses, and then I can go away and, you know polish it up, but I thought I'd do this one on television instead, just for my other bit. Hello, Osho Leela! <laughs> I have to say, I've, I honestly, it's been an incredible experience this week. I, I, I have done things this week that I never, ever, ever thought I would do in my entire life. I washed up. <laughs> No one, no one warned me about that. Can I? <laughs> I haven't started the day by shouting, No! 
wow! Since I stopped having one night stands. <laughs> the best way to prepare for a stand up gig is to get up at 6.30 and walk through bluebells in silence. You know, it starts when you get in the car. You know, that's when the silence begins. And uh, it, was, it was lovely, actually. It was lovely to be with someone in a totally silent car without having to have the row first. <laughs> And I realise I've actually been doing silent meditation for years, but I always called it sulking. And uh, at the end of it all, we, we hogged, of course we hogged. Um, and I thought, if someone's driving past here, what are they going to think? Like, it's an emotional farewell after an all-night dogging session. You know. Hogging, of course, was a very important aspect of the week. I was very wary about hogging. I've, I never really hog anyone. And as soon as I arrived, I was hogged uh, left, right and centre. <laughs> and people, people give you advice mid-hog. I love that. While you're actually hogging, they'll, they'll say things like, oh, not so tight. <laughs> and uh, my favourite one was, we don't normally do this in the communal shower. <laughs> I haven't communally showered for, you know, many, many years and uh, I was a bit nervous about it and I thought, I'm going to be just bold, you know. So I kind of walked in naked and went, morning everyone! And, and then I said, actually, I'm up here. Because, <laughs> you know, a celebrity penis is always an anecdote, obviously. <laughs> Not a very long anecdote, but an anecdote nevertheless. <laughs> One of, one of the things that people um, back home uh, said to me was, uh, oh, th those, are, those are show people. He said, they said, it'll, it'll all be sex when you're there. <laughs> they said, oh, it'll be non-stop, the sex. I thought, oh, will it? <laughs> okay. So uh, I thought, well, you know. <laughs> so uh, where was it? I didn't happen. <laughs> What was it, a week off or? <laughs> uh, no, I have to go back, you know, and they'll all be waiting for exciting stories. And I have to say, you know, the only thing I stuffed was envelopes. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there, was, there, was, uh, there was sex in a way, because um, Sarita um, came in and talked to me about um, being uh, tantric. All I'd heard about tantric sex was that um, Sting did it and uh, it lasts for eight hours, that, that was all I know. <laughs> it is possible, you know, you could have sex for eight hours if you wanted, and I thought, well, I've had sex for about an hour and 20 minutes, but in total, <laughs> throughout my life. And I'm including the cigarette after now, and, and the foreplay, in fact. <laughs> foreplay for me is just me saying, oh, please. <laughs> I have to say this though, there was, there was a moment when I became slightly alarmed because there was a, there was a woman who was sitting next to us who I spoke to after and it was very lovely and uh, didn't care about the TV camera, just said, I believe in just letting yourself go. And I said, Paula, I noticed. <laughs> and she told me in, in a former life she'd been drowned and I thought, well, with orgasms like that, no wonder. <laughs> we, ne we nearly all went down with a ship tonight, I said. I mean, we were right next. My cushion was virtually washed away. <laughs> Look, I've met some very beautiful people. It's been a very beautiful experience. Thanks for making me so welcome. I've learned a lot, and I hope it's been okay for you guys. I thought it was bloody great, and he was just uh, truthful and fun and, and hysterical. I was so touched, and... I'm emotional because I feel him so touched and I felt his heart all the way through it. You know, I met a lot of really nice people and, and a, a brilliant attitude, if you like. A kind of open, warm, loving attitude, which I'm not embarrassed to say I really, really enjoyed. And I hope I do take away, because if I take some of that away, I'll be a, a nicer person.